How many watts do we really need in a guitar amp? Let's face it, most of us are not rock stars. We're not playing in stadiums. Most of us are just playing in small clubs, in bars, or community centers, or churches. Some of us are just playing in rehearsal studios, or garages, or our basements, or our apartment bedrooms. Do we really need 100 watts of power? To go along with this video, I'm also posting on my website a list of all my favorite small low watt amps. So you can get that from my website, the link is below. And while you're there, check out my latest book. It's called Guitar Soloing Like a Pro and it's available on Amazon. All right, so I'm gonna tell you a little story and I am still, after so many years, I am still kind of embarrassed about this. I can't believe I did this. But anyway, it's a good illustration of what I'm talking about. So years and years ago, I got a gig in San Francisco at a very, very famous nightclub called Bimbo's 365. Now, I'm a Canadian, so I'm from Vancouver. This is super exciting. I can't wait to get down to San Francisco and get to play at this famous club where all these huge bands have played over the years, you know? So we get there, we're doing sound check. At the time I had a, a Vox AC30, which is not even, not even that big of an amp. It's not even really that loud of an amp. But anyway, we do the sound check, everything's good, cool. So we go, we have dinner somewhere, you know, we're waiting in the uh, green room. We're called on stage. And as I walk on stage, I don't know what came over me. But at that very moment, I decided, as I walked past my amp, I'm just gonna crank that master volume way up. Why did I do that? I don't know. I guess I was just overexcited or something, and I just wanted to, I just wanted this to be like the most fun I've ever had here in this awesome club in San Francisco. So, you know, the lights are on, just about to hit that first chord, and I can hear the amp just kinda buzzing now you know it is humming oh it is ready and the audience you know if you've ever been to that club you'll see that the audience is basically like right in front of you laid out right in front of you so their heads are basically just at amp level you know so I'm ready and when I hit that first chord what happens everybody in the first five seven rows just goes ah, like that it was like, I don't know, knives in their ears. It was so loud. It was loud for me. I was shocked. Man, it was not good. That is not a good way to start a gig. That is not a good way to start your set feeling like the audience is suddenly in shock and holding their ears. Well, I learned my lesson. So why do so many of us buy these big loud amps. I think there are a few reasons and the first one might be hard for a lot of us to admit. A lot of us think bigger is better. And I admit it's probably amazing to stand in front of a big stack and smash on that power cord and feel that sound hit you in the back. I bet that is pretty cool. Another element, I think, is that a lot of us look up to so many of the guitar players of the 70s and 80s, you know, the greats, who did play with huge amps, but, you know, they were playing in stadiums. Still, we kind of want to feel like that, or we want to emulate that, or we want to know what that was like to be like them. And third, maybe there's even a part of us, or a part of some of us, that thinks if we use the amp that our hero used, Oh, wow, maybe we'll sound like them, or we'll sound better than we are. Now, I'm not a music historian, but if we look at photos of concerts of the early Beatles, and they played in big venues, they played in stadiums, and have a look at their amps. I don't see any microphones in front of those amps. I mean, here they are in 1966 in Germany. They're playing their Vox amps behind them there. Here they are at Shea Stadium. I mean... There's no mics in front of those amps. Those are Vox uh, 7120s, I think. Those are 120 watt amps. And that's all they had to power their guitars for the whole stadium. That's all that people heard. And they're playing in front of screaming teenagers. And as we know, the story goes, they stopped performing live because they couldn't hear themselves anymore. I think Ringo Starr said something like that. The only way he could keep time was to watch 
uh, you know, the butts of the other Beatles kind of swing back and forth. <laughs> Here's the Rolling Stones in 1965. Again, I don't see any mics in front of those amps. That looks like a pretty big stadium. Here they are again. And another one. I don't see any mics there. So it's no wonder that bands had to start using bigger and bigger amps or the venues had to start putting microphones in front of the amps and projecting that sound throughout the venues. I mean, I've been playing gigs for a long time, since maybe the late 90s. And you know, every gig I've ever done, except for really, really small ones, every gig I've ever done, the sound engineer will always put a microphone in front of the amp. And why would they want to do this? Well, they want to do this so that they can project the sound of the instruments throughout the venue evenly. Because if you're the audience member, like that fateful day in San Francisco, if you're one of those many audience members who is sitting right in front of that amp that's turned up super loud, well, that's all you're going to hear, right? So now what we want to do is we want to bring the amplifier's volume down to a reasonable level so that then the sound engineers can mic everything, mix it from their board, and pipe that through the venue sound system evenly throughout the entire room so that no matter where the audience member is, is sitting or standing, that they're getting a good representation of the music. So what is an appropriate volume for on stage? Well, I always think of it like this. How loud are the drums? If you're louder than the drums, then you're too loud. The best way to go about it, I see, is to mix your own volume on stage so that the band sounds good together on stage and leave the sound for the sound engineer to deal with for the audience in the house. So here's something I learned years ago that I have found to be invaluable and that is that the sound that comes out of a guitar amplifier is very directional. It comes out straight as an arrow. So if I'm standing in front of the amp and I'm playing I can hear it great. I can hear the top end. I can hear the attack, all the things that I need to play well. But if I'm on stage and I'm moving around and I want to be a little cool, I got to move around a bit. That's what they tell me. Well, I might be over here at some point. And a lot of that top end can seem like it's disappeared because I'm not in the trajectory of the sound, right? So what now, whenever I do gigs, I make sure that I set my amp up so that it's pointed pretty much at my head. Even better than this, this is actually kind of low for me. So what I do now is I use one of these little stands that you can buy, and I mean, they're pretty cheap and they work great for smaller amps, and they fold out like this. And what it does is it just sits on the ground and it tilts your amp back so that you can point it straight at your head. Another thing that I've learned to do over the years in order to make sure that I can hear myself clearly is some of the time I'll actually be facing slightly off center because that turns my ear closer to the amp. Now, maybe that's just because I'm getting older and my hearing's not as good. I'm not sure. But I'll tell you, I really want to be able to hear that top end well so that when I dig in or relax my picking, I can really hear the different dynamics of, of my playing. So since that fateful, embarrassing gig in San Francisco, I've seen other bands make the same mistake. And you know, I wish I could tell them, but so far I've never really had the guts. Years ago, I did a gig at uh, the Penthouse here in Vancouver, which is also a pretty, pretty famous uh, nightclub. And the band that opened for us, this guy comes in with this massive Marshall stack. I mean, huge. And this is a pretty small club. This is like 100 people, I think, something like that. You know, I mean, you set that thing up and you start playing that thing and you're, you know, he's drowning out the drums. He's drowning out the rest of the band. If you're sitting in front of that amp, that stack, you can't hear anything else. 
well, these guys are playing, and I think that guy was too dumb to even know, you know, what the problem was. But I'll tell you, half the people in the venue left. Why? Because it was too loud. They couldn't really hear the music for all the, the volume, for all the sound. So half the people in the venue leave, and by the time we get on stage, there's nobody left. There's nobody there. So ultimately, I can't tell you what the right amp is for you, but I can tell you what I've been using for years and it's been working great for me. For rock and roll style gigs, I use this Vox AC15. It's only 15 watts, but let me tell you, the sound of that amp just cuts right through a mix. For country gigs and lots of other style gigs, I use this Fender Deluxe Reverb Reissue. It's got beautiful tones, it's 22 watts, so it's a little more in watts, but actually I find the Vox is a little bit louder. Um, might be just the speaker difference, I don't know. And lately I bought this uh, Katana Mark II 50 watt solid state amp, and I mean, it sounds great. And you know, that thing is super lightweight. And that's the last thing to consider. There's lots of venues that I play in, like the railway downtown, where I've got to carry stuff up a flight of stairs to, to get up to the, the venue. Do I really want to be carrying super heavy amps up there? So I'm pretty excited to try this Boss Katana at some gigs as soon as, you know, the world opens up again. And over the past couple years, I've started to see some guys, they're not even bringing amps at all to gigs. They're bringing stomp boxes that are basically amps in a pedal. Does it sound as good? No, I don't think it sounds quite as good, but I mean, there's a lot to be said for just bringing a little bag to a gig and that's that. And for some gigs, you know what? Maybe that's good enough. And pretty soon, I'm sure those stomp boxes are gonna sound amazing and we won't be able to tell the difference. So let me know what you think. Have you been using big amps? Have you changed what you've been using? Have you tried using smaller amps? Post in the comments below, I'd like to hear.